Um, in the scriptures of John chapter 8, starting at verse 1, reading down to verse 11. Amen? Amen. And this uh, word was really birthed out of something that I uh, went through. Amen. And it will be. You'll hear this again. I'm going to put it out there because I don't want anybody to take my word. <laughs> And don't take my word, I'm very patent. Amen? Amen. Very incorporated. It's very become my book. Amen. <laughs> amen. Um, when you have John 8, 1, 2, 11, say amen. Amen. And I pray that this word, amen, will reach you where you are. Amen. Sometimes other pastor that has come with the difficult things. Amen. Bishop will empower you. Amen. But the Lord will use me to bring you back and really get some things in check. That's secret, that's hidden. Amen. We want to go forward, but we got to first, you know, be delivered from some things in our past. Amen. We got to be set free from some things. Sometimes you don't know how healed you are until you face it again. Amen. Until you face it again. That's powerful right there. Amen. Um, reading from the New Living Translation, John 8, 1 to 11. If you want to help me announce my topic. Amen. Jesus returned to Mount of, uh, to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. And he was speaking to the teachers of religious law and Pharisees. And the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stopped down, stooped down, and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to this woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want you to get up and look at your neighbor across the aisles. Come on, y'all. Move. Be quick, be quick, be quick. Y'all be interactive. Amen? Amen. And help me announce my topic and say to someone, you're about to experience scandalous forgiveness. Come on here. I know that's right. Hold up. Hold up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Scandalous forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To be scandalous is something that can cause others to view, view you in another light. It causes conflict and controversy. It causes unwelcome conversation about you. Amen? Amen. 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 Have you ever been in a scandal or the topic of someone's gossip? Amen? Amen. Amen. It feels very uncomfortable. Amen? Amen? Amen. But also, not just a scandal, but it's also scandalous forgiveness. This is what Jesus did for the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Uh -huh. This is how we have to be in this hour with the things that have happened in our life and what people have done to us. We just have to, you know what? I know it may seem scandalous. It may not seem like I don't need to ever forgive this person for what they have done for me, but I'm going to do what Jesus did. I'm going to offer you scandalous forgiveness. Amen? To forgive. Amen? And a whole lot of us are still harboring some stuff. We're still carrying some stuff about some people that have done some things in our life. And I can say that because I can put myself on the altar of sacrifice. Amen? I can say that you don't know how, how healed you are until you're forced to face something again. Amen? Something, where, even where we went on yesterday, and I'm just, I put myself out there only to be a God example. Amen? I'm not afraid to let you see God unpack you before my eyes. Unpack me before your eyes. Amen? Because in the unpacking, I'm getting my deliverance. In the unpacking and the things that he's revealing to me about me, he's setting me free. Amen? Amen. So I don't pull all this foolishness into my future. Amen. There's a place in God that I'm trying to go. There's a place in God that I know he desires to take me. And I'm not going to be my own hindrance. Hallelujah. So I was faced with having to, to go into a situation where you think because you move past something, you've healed past it. 
but you're not necessarily healed past it. Sometimes God, God told me this morning, said sometimes I gotta feel you past some things. So that you don't get stuck in some stuff. Amen. But then I'm gonna let it come around again. And I'm gonna let you visit it. And then I'm gonna see, I'm gonna speak your healing. I'm gonna show you that now is the time to be healed. I couldn't heal you while the fire was hot because you would have stayed right there. But I had to feel you past it. So he'll allow it to come full circle. He'll allow it to come back to you. And I really was feeling some type of way. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm like, Lord, when, when is it going to be our time that people that say they love us and are loyal and committed to us, when are they going to just be just that? I don't care what happens in my life. We're only human. We, sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. But where are the sons? Where are the daughters? Where are the friends that stay closer than a brother? Where are they? Where are the people that don't turn on you because of nonsense? Amen? And then the same ones that you turn to, where were they in your finest hour? But the one you turn your back on is the one that you gave the invitation to be right there. Amen? Because one thing about us, when we're real, we're real. We love you unconditionally. And I do that because God loved me unconditionally. Amen. It's not the stuff that you see. It's all the stuff that you that's behind the scenes that I needed forgiveness for. It's all the stuff behind the scenes that I needed deliverance from. Amen. It came with a cost. Trust me. It comes with a cost. But he offers a scandalous forgiveness. Just like this woman. What does it mean to forgive? It means to stop feeling angry. It will resentful towards someone for an offense. Stop feeling angry. You know how you're healed when you can hear the situation talked about or brought up? Right. Or when you can see the person or the people or the perpetrator? Right. And you have no kind of feeling. That's right. That's good. I don't have to feel good. I don't have to feel bad. I just won't feel nothing. Amen. 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 <laughs> so to forgive is to stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an offense, flaw, or mistake. Just an example, I didn't think I'll ever forgive David. I don't know why this, this uh, scenario says David for the way he treated her. Synonyms of forgiveness. Pardon, excuse, exonerate, absolve, acquit. Let off, grant amnesty. Amen. Make, stop making excuses. Stop feeling resentful toward. Feel no resentment. Amen. Amen. And just because you do that for a person, doesn't mean that they didn't hurt you. Right, right. It doesn't mean that they didn't commit the offense. But when you're no longer keeping yourself in prison. Right. Amen. You don't forgive for that person. You forgive to free yourself. Right, right. So I want to be free in every area of my life. So I gave God permission in this season right. to God whatever you need to deal with. I don't see, I don't care how pretty. I may look on the outside, but if you see areas in my life that you need to deal with, you know what, God? You don't have to beat me before people, amen, and expose me. I'll expose myself to you. Yeah. 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 What does it mean to have scandalous forgiveness or to give scandalous forgiveness? It means to live like it never happened. To live like it never happened. Amen? Amen. Live like it was just nothing but a bump in the road. You can't live like that. The place where the enemy wanted to condemn you and expose you has become your place to experience grace. The, all the Pharisees and religious folks, I just, I, I just, this is my question, the ones that brought this woman to Jesus, and she and she was caught. It says she was caught in the act of adultery. Yeah. My question to the religious folks is, how do you know? Come on. You must have been there. Amen. How do you know? You must have been there. They were bent on bringing this woman to Jesus, and they all said it was twofold. They wanted to catch Jesus in the trap. They wanted to find something to accuse him. 
Amen. But it wasn't the time for his accusation. Amen. Amen. But they brought her to a place where they wanted to expose her. They, want, they thought they were bringing her to a place of condemnation. Jesus was among the crowd teaching. So this is a perfect opportunity for the enemy to expose all your stuff. Amen. But the place of condemnation has become your place of grace. Jesus writing in the sand. What did he write in the dust? Amen. He must have, I believe he wrote grace. Amen. He wrote grace because after he stood up, all her accusers scattered. Amen. What is grace? Given redemption and cleared of evidence against me. He gave me grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because at some point, 
You should be, be able to look at what you have been through and say, Thank, you know what? It was good for me that I went through that. I never knew God the way I knew him unless I had come through that situation. So God, thank you. But what the enemy designed to kill me, you meant it for my good. And it was good that I went there. It was good that I cried. It's good that somebody hurt me. Because it taught me how to be strong. It taught me that in my weakness, you're made strong. Amen. Amen. See, we, we 
the older generation, they felt they had to keep everything secret and bottled up. Amen? Yeah, right, yeah. Amen. Or they were doing stuff, but they just kept it hidden. Yeah. When they say, don't, don't air our family's laundry or your dirty laundry, amen? Yeah. You know what? It's out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So God, use it for your glory. Yeah. Amen? Sure. Take this laundry and make it a covering for somebody else. Philippians 2 and 13 says, For it is God which, work, which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen? Amen. Some of you won't progress further than where you are until you ask God. Amen. Not just for your forgiveness, but Lord, help me to forgive the people who have perpetrated against me. Help me to forgive the people who have hurt me. Yeah, you may have been cut to your very core. Amen. How do you think the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Amen. And the ones that she probably was sleeping with then turn around because they wanted to be pious and religious. Bring her to Jesus. Where they just knew that he could not deny the law of Moses who said to stone her. But what they didn't bargain for that he was going to expose their sin. Amen. Amen. What happens when the exposer becomes the exposed? Hey. The <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And one of my favorite scriptures, I just and I just put it, just mix everything. God gets a mixed bag when he gets me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He may he gets all my moods, my emotions, my wives, my whatever. Amen. But I love it because I'm pliable enough yeah. for him to put me in spiritual check. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And say, look, so what? I look what they meant evil against you. Yeah. Amen. I meant it for your good. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And see, God knows the heart of people. Yeah. Amen. You just, you look at it and think, on the surface, this is a good friendship. Why couldn't it have lasted? Uh -huh. Amen? Why couldn't our kids grow up together? Why couldn't we just remain close the way we were? But God knows the motive of people. He knows their heart. He knows their motive. Amen? Amen. See, sometimes he has to do a clean cut. Amen? It's painful. Sometimes he got to just rip you apart. Because we don't know how to let go of some things. Amen? Amen. And where we may experience the pain, it's all for your good. Amen. And you can look back and say, it was good that I went through this. It was good that I separated this. Because God, when you separated me, it allowed me to see that person from another perspective. It allowed me to see the situation from a greater position. Amen. You can't see everything while you're in it. But when you step above it, then you can see it clearly. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. Scandalous forgiveness. God, in all my stuff. See, I was quiet. I was shy. Amen? Amen. But there, that's the thing about what people that are sneaky. We do stuff behind the scenes. Amen? I'm just I'm telling me. Amen? Amen. I know you all saved and pious and all. It's good. I'm trying to get where you are. Amen. Amen. But see, God had to deal with all of that stuff. Amen. Amen. If I wasn't, I wouldn't have had a baby. Amen. At 19. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I was doing something. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm putting myself out there. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. And I'm not afraid of you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. You don't scare me. Amen. But God gives us scandalous forgiveness. And guess what? He wants us to turn around and give it to somebody else. Amen. Amen. We always hear in church, give and it shall be given to you. But forgive and forgiveness shall be given to you. Amen. Amen. Give God praise. You're forgiving. Right. Amen. I forgive you. Because it's not about you being free. It's about me being free. 